This video, sponsored by, Envato Elements. Hey everyone, welcome back to my After Effects tutorial. Today, we are going to create this. In case you don't want to follow this tutorial, you can download this template from my Patreon. This way, you can help me to make more tutorials like this. Anyway, let's get started. Open After Effects and create a new composition. I am calling it Cartoon Logo Intro. As always, I'm using the 1920 by 1080 resolution. And frame rate of 15 to get the animation look. Of course, you can keep the high frame rate if you want, but I am keeping the 15 frames per second. Now is the important step. Right here at the top, we have this 3D renderer option. Simply click on it, and then choose your 3D renderer to a different one. This time, we are going to use the Cinema 4D. This step is important, so make sure to do it. Now, by activating Cinema 4D, you will be able to extrude the text and shape layer. But some features will be disabled. Such as blending mode, track mat, layer styles and more. Also, it only works with the vector layers, such as shape. It won't work with a ping or JPEG image. But we have a solution for that, which we will cover in this tutorial. Alright? Let's move to the first step. Create a new solid layer, and call it the background. Make sure to use the comp size, and then choose a color for the background. Let's keep this violet dark color, and then hit OK. Then create one more solid layer, and this time, I am calling it scratch. Let's keep the color to the white, and then hit OK. Now go to the effects and the presets, and search for the CC star burst. Apply it onto the layer, and let's adjust a few settings. First, change the scatter value to 1000, and then change the size value to 50. I'm going to increase the speed of these particles, so change the speed value to around 5. Now again go to the effects and the presets, and search for the posterize time. Place it right below the CC star burst, and then change the frame rate value to a lower number. Let's keep the value 8 frames. Check the animation, and this is how it looks now. I think I need to go with the lower number. Let's keep the frame rate value 4, and now it is looking much better. Let's move to the next step. Import your logo file into your project, and place it on top of all layers. As you can see, my logo is huge, so I'm going to scale down the size of it. Press S to open the scale, and change the scale value to a lower number. I am keeping the scale value 25%. As I said earlier, 3D only works with the shape layer, or the vector images. Unfortunately, our logo is available in image format only, and the 3D extrusion will not work with this image. You can actually import your Illustrator file into your project, and then convert it as a shape. In case you are like me, who don't have the vector file of his logo, then simply add a shape background behind your logo, and then place your logo on top of it. It may sound confusing, but don't worry, we are going to work on it. Let's see how can we do it. Make sure to unselect any selected layer, then go to the tools and select the ellipse tool. Please note, my fill is set to a solid color, and I am using this golden type of color. Also, my stroke is set to none. Now click right into the center, and make a circle. Let's keep this size. Now grab the move tool, and then align your shape into the center. Place this shape layer right below your logo layer, 
and then rename it as the logo background. Now my logo is looking a little bigger, so I'm scaling down the size of it. And now select the logo background layer, and adjust the size of it. One more thing, make sure the anchor point of this shape layer is placed right into the center of it, so that we can rotate it later. In case your anchor point is not aligned into the center, then right click on it, go to the transform, and choose the center anchor point in layer content. It will place your anchor point right into the center of your layer. Perfect. Now select this logo background layer, and make a duplicate of it. Place it right below the logo background layer, and call it logo background 3D. Now click on this 3D icon, to make this layer 3D. In case this, switch tab is not available here for you, then press F4 to switch between. Now open the layer properties by clicking on this arrow, and then the geometry option. Right here, we have this extrusion depth. Just increase the depth value of it. And it will add some depth to our shape layer. Right now I cannot see any depth in my shape. It is because the shape is only visible from the front view. We need to rotate the shape a little. So that we can see it from the side. Open rotation, and change the Y rotation value to around 50 degrees, and you can start seeing the outline of it. Don't worry, we are going to see it clearly in a few moments. Minimize all layers to get some room, and then create a new null object. I'm calling it controls, and placing it on top of all layers. Now we are going to parent all the logo and shape layers with this null. So select all of them, and then right here, we don't have the parent tab available. Let's bring it back. Just right click in this top area, go to the columns, and choose parent and link. Now grab this pick whip, and then drop it onto the controls layer. Now all these layers are linked with this control layer, and we can animate them just by using this control. So instead of adding the keyframes on all three layers, we will be adding keyframes to only a single layer. Nice. Now unselect all layers, and then select this controls layer. Press R to open its rotation. As you can see, we have only a single rotation value here. So make sure to convert this layer to 3D by clicking here. And now we have three additional rotation values. Make sure to convert all layers in 3D. And then we can start animating it. As you can see, we have some depth in our shape, and it is looking like a coin. Don't worry you will see it clearly in the next step. But here is a problem, my logo layer is not visible now, it is because the position of all 3D layers are the same, and they are colliding with each other. So let's fix it. Select the logo layer, and the logo background layer, open their position. Here change the last position value to a negative number for the logo layer. Let's keep the value negative 1. Also, change the logo background position value to negative 1 as well. Let's keep the logo position value to negative 2, and now it is visible. Check the animation, and here you can see the logo is visible all the time. Perfect. This is what we are looking for. Let's add more depth to our shape. Select your logo background layer, and then open its properties. Let's minimize the transform, and then open the geometry option. Here change the extrusion depth value to 50, and it will look thicker. Let's add some animation now. Make sure you are at the first frame, and then select the control layer. Here change the Y rotation value to 0 degrees. Let's minimize all layers to get some room. Now we also need the position for animating this coin. So press Shift plus P to open position along with all these rotation values. Add a keyframe on the position, and place this keyframe value in a 1 second position. Now change the Y position value to a lower number. I am keeping the value of 1300 pixels. Now we are adding keyframes on the Y rotation value, 
so make sure you are at the first frame, and then add a keyframe on the Y rotation, as well as the Z rotation. Then go to the 1 second position, and change their first value to 1. It means they are going to complete one rotation cycle before settling down completely. Check the animation, and this is how it looks now. Not much interesting. But it will look better in the next few steps. Select these end keyframes, and place them in two seconds position, so that they will stay a little longer. Now select all keyframes, right click on it, go to the keyframe assistant, and select easy ease. Now open graph editor, in case your graph does not look like this, then right click here, and choose edit speed graph. Now change the curves to something like this. And it will add some easy ease to the rotation. Now select the position as well, select both keyframes, right click on them, go to the key from assistant, and easy ease them as well. Also, I am changing the curve of it. Switch back to the main timeline, and this is how it looks now. Now go to the first frame position, and then add a keyframe on X rotation. Then go to the two second position, and change the first X rotation value to 1 also. Select both keyframes, and easy ease them as well. Now open graph editor, and change the curves to something like this. Switch back to the main timeline, and this is how it looks now. I think this X rotation is not looking good. So go to the first keyframe position, and change the X rotation value to 180 degrees. Check the animation, and this is looking much better. Minimize this layer, and let's make some light effect on this coin. Go to the timing where we can see the logo from the side, and then select the logo background 3D layer, and change the shape, color to the darker one. I'm keeping this orange color. Hit OK, and it will separate the shape from our logo. Now select the logo background layer, and add a stroke to it. I'm keeping this dark, gray color. Also, my stroke is set to 5 pixels. It will create this nice looking outline around the shape. Check the animation, and this is looking much better. Let's go to the 1 second position, so that we can see the shape clearly. Then select the logo background 3D layer, and make a duplicate of it. Place it right below the logo background 3D layer, and rename it as logo background stroke. Now open this layer, and then the geometry option, here change the extrusion depth value to 0. Then go to the stroke, and add a stroke to it. I am keeping the same stroke setting, as we have used in the logo background shape. Now press P to open position, and change the last position value to around 50, it will place this stroke right on the edge of this 3D coin. This lead position value will be the same as the extrusion depth of the logo background 3D layer. Let's keep the value 51. And it will add a stroke at the end of this coin. Not bad. Check the animation, and this is how it looks. Let's create the glowing star now. Make sure to unselect any selected layer, then go to the tools, and select the star tool. Now create a tiny star like this. Make sure to press and hold the shift key on your keyboard, so that it won't have any rotation applied to it. Then open polyester 1, and then polyester path 1. Here change the points value to 4, and then change the inner radius value to a lower number. Let's keep the value 10, and this is how it looks. Let's rename this layer as the star. Now make sure the anchor point of this shape layer, is placed right into the center. If it is not, then grab the move tool, right click on it, go to the transform, and choose center anchor point in layer content. Again select the star layer, and then remove the stroke from it. Also, I am going to change its fill color. Let's keep this white color, and this is how it looks. 
Let's add some animation to this star. Press S to open scale. Go to the first frame position, and then add a keyframe on the scale. Here change the scale value to 0%. Then go to around 5 frames forward, and change the scale value to 50%. Again, go to the 3 frames forward, copy this last keyframe, and paste it right here. Then copy this first keyframe, move to the next 5 frame forward, and paste it right here. Now select all keyframes, and easy ease them. Check the animation, and this is how the star looks. Now go to the last keyframe position, select the star layer, and press Ctrl, or Command Shift D, to split the layer. Delete the top part, and now we are left with this layer part only. I'm going to make more duplicates of this star layer, and placing them in different positions. Also, I am keeping a few frames distance from each other, so that they play at different timing. Some of my stars will be placed on the edge of the coin, as well as the logo. I have made around 15 stars, and this is how it looks. This is looking good, but a little slow. Let's adjust their timing, so that they appear right after each other. After fixing the timing issue, it will look much better. Now select all star layers. Right click on them, and choose precompose. I'm calling it star glow, and then hit OK. It's time to add some reflection. Create a new solid layer, and call it reflection. I'm using this white color for it, and then hit OK. Make sure to place it on top of all layers. Then go to the tools, and select the rectangle tool. Here create, two masks like this. Now press P, to open position. And then go to the timing where you want to add this reflection. I'm going to place this reflection at around 2 and half second position, and then add a keyframe on position. Then go to the 1 second forward, and change the exposition value to a higher number. This value should be higher, so that the reflection should cross our logo background shape. Now select both keyframes, and easy ease them as well. Let's add the mask on it. Select the logo background layer, and make a duplicate of it. Place it on top of all layers, and then call it the logo background mask. Now change the reflection track mat value to alpha mat, and the reflection won't be appearing anymore. But don't worry, if you play the animation, the reflection is placed right here. This is looking better, but we need to fix the timing of it. So select both keyframes, and place them to the left. Now select the logo background mask layer, open scale, and change the scale value to a little lower. I am keeping the scale value of 81%. Also, select the reflection, and turn down its opacity. I am keeping the value of 50%. And now we are done. Check the animation, and this is how it looks now. Thank you for watching this tutorial. I will see you in the next one. Till then, good luck, and peace. Design video products faster, with Envato Elements. Get unlimited download, After Effects template, stock footage, fonts, music files, web templates, and more. Visit the Envato Elements. Check the first link in the description.